you have a Bible, you want to turn to uh, Romans chapter 12. We're going to be in the, looking at the first two verses there. It's going to be kind of a launching path for where we start this morning. Uh, Romans is in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And if you need a Bible, there should be a, a Bible on the pew rack in front of you. And it has the page number in the bulletin. Or you can look on your, your phone, your tablet, um, whatever, whatever you, whatever you have to open up God's Word. Uh, that's where we're going to be. Um, this morning. And so we're, we're in, uh, this is actually week two of a, a new series that we're in called Me and My Perfect. And if you'll notice on the low, it's kind of hard to see there, but perfect has got a line through it. So it's me and my real family. And, and, and families, uh, if you missed last week, Brother Chad did a great job of introducing our series and he looked at the, the life of, of Joseph, not Joseph Jesus's uh, fa- earthly father, but Joseph from the Old Testament, and uh, did a great job of, of kind of walking through his family, through his story, and seeing their, their imperfection, but what God did through, through Joseph and his family. And, and families look different. All families look different. We, we have, you know, two parents and kids. We have single parents and kids. We have um, just, just a married couple, maybe a single person. Uh, step family, foster family, grandparents raising grandkids, um, several generations under one roof, and, and on and on. And, and here's the reality that, it, that I want you to know. And that the, the reality is this, is that no matter how your family looks, there, there's two things you need to know. First one is this, that it's not perfect, and that's okay. Your family's not perfect, my family's not perfect, that's Okay. And here's the other thing you need to know. God loves your family, and He wants to help your family, whatever it looks like. He wants to help your family to be a family that seeks after the heart of God. And this morning, our, our conversation on families is, is taking us towards, towards uh, parenting. And in this whole series, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things that affect the family. Um, and so, but this week we're, we're landing on, on parenting. And I want you to know that I, despite how I look, I am not a perfect parent. Um, you can just ask my wife, ask my three kids. Um, they'll be glad to meet you for lunch and tell you all the reasons or all the ways that I am not perfect. So I don't, I'm not standing up here as the perfect parent or as the expert, but I'm just, I, I'm, I'm up here to hopefully shed some light on the type of parent that God wants us to be. And, and parenting is a hard job. It's one of the hardest jobs um, ever. And, and, and most parents are trying to do their best and hoping just to not mess up their kids. Um, and there's, there's, a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of voices out there that, that want to tell us how to be good parents. And some of it's helpful and some of it's just, it's just crazy. And you can find hundreds of blogs and books and podcasts and articles that give you their version of the idea of what it means to be a good parent and how to successfully raise your kids. And some of you may look at yourself and, and you may say, you know what, I'm, I'm a pretty good parent. And if, if that's where you are and that's how you feel, then, then I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that's where you are. And, and I hope that you continue to feel that way. Others of you might be saying, um, I, I need help. So, but whatever you think about your parenting, the good news is God doesn't, he doesn't leave us all alone to figure out this parenting thing. We can look to His Word to help know how to be good moms and how to be good dads, how to be good grandparents, how to be good aunts, uncles, whatever, whatever your title is as a caregiver over kids. We're not perfect and that's okay, and you, you'll probably hear me say that a few times. But God takes imperfect people, imperfect parents, and he does amazing things in them and through them. So I, I, I want to just start there, that we're imperfect, but God wants to do great things through us. So let's look in Romans chapter 12. I'm just going to read the first two verses. And it says this, it says, Therefore, now when you see a therefore there in Scripture, you've got to remember, you've got to go back and read what's going on, therefore. So in this case, go back and read the first 11 chapters. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect 
will of God. Now, I don't know if you've ever read that passage in the context of parenting, but I think it's, it's a powerful picture of, what, of how we should be parents. Now, there's a, there's a few phrases in there that I, I want to focus on. and The first one is, in view of God's mercies. So what Paul is saying is, because of what God has done, all the things that God has done before, there should be a response from us. The, the idea is knowing what God has done for you and for me, His, his mercies, um, and, and that should be plural. Some of your Bible, it, it may not be plural, but it should be plural because of the idea is of all of the things that God has done, His, his salvation through the cross, his, his love for us, His forgiveness of sins, um, the fact that we don't have to earn His love, but He gives it freely. We can't, we're not good enough to get His love. We don't deserve His love, but He offers it to us. While we were still sinners, Christ died on the cross. And so the idea is in view of all of that, in view of all that, we should, there is a, a response that's required from us. And we should, knowing what, knowing what He's done, we should respond. And it, it's not just belief in those things that He's done for us, but it's faith. And what's the difference? Well, the difference is this. Belief is knowledge. Faith is putting that knowledge into action. And so what, what are we supposed to do? Well, He goes on and he, he urges us to present our bodies as living sacrifices. Jesus' death on a cross, it did away with the sacrificial system. Uh, before Jesus' death, the way to atone for their sins, to make payment for their sins, to receive that forgiveness, was they would have to make a sacrifice on the altar of God to, to, to kill an animal. And, but Jesus came and, and He did away with that. And so there's, there's no longer the need for that. He paid for our sins. He was the sacrifice once and for all. So Paul is not calling for an animal sacrifice. He's calling for us to give our lives to God because of what He has done for us. Notice it's, it's a living sacrifice. So the, really, Paul's not saying die for God, but what he's saying is live for God. Live for Him. Die to self, live for God. And, this, and our lives should be lived under the authority in His direction. We do this because this is, this is our way to worship God. It's the only, I said this earlier, it's the only appropriate response to God's love, to God's provision, to God's sacrifice for us. We worship Him with our lives because He is worthy. He deserves it. He is God. And the verse goes on to say that we do not be conformed to this age uh, but be transformed. And the word conformed in the Greek, it carries this idea of being malleable. Like when, when, you, have, when you have something that you can squish it and change it and work it and, and create something. And so when, and there when Paul's talking about do not be conformed, he's saying don't let culture just kind of change you and mold you and just to fit whatever shape that it wants you to be in. That's not what we're called to do. We, in other words, we, we just... If culture says be this, then that's what, we be, that, that's what we become. We change. Whatever the latest idea. Think about a leaf that's blowing in the wind. It has no control. It just goes wherever the, the wind tells it, wherever the wind pushes it. It has no idea where it's going. No idea where it's going to stop, where it's going to land. It's just being blown by the wind. And that's not what we're supposed to be as followers of Christ. Being transformed, that idea in the Greek carries, carries with it the idea of our both feet are on the ground. That we, we have a solid foundation. We're not shaped by culture, but we've been shaped by God and what He has done for us. The transformation, it, it's, it's at the core of, of your being. It, it permeates all the way through to your heart. We're anchored. We're transformed. And, and nothing will move us off of center. And, and notice how it says that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. Uh, one way we might say it in, in today's culture is, is kind of like we have a change of heart. You, you think differently. You, you see differently. We allow our relationship with God to, to change how, how we view this world and how, what we think about this world, how we live our lives. And this type of thinking will help us to know what God's will is for us and how He wants us to live, those, live our lives. And so I, I kind of know what you're thinking right now maybe. Is so what is... What is what is all of that? You know, thank you for the little exegesis on Romans 1 and 2 there. But, but, but what, is, what does all of that have to do with parenting? And here's what I would say. Everything. 
It has everything to do with parenting. We're supposed to present our bodies, our whole being, everything about us, and yes, even our parenting, we're supposed to present that as a living sacrifice to God. Our parenting should be given over to Him. We, we aren't supposed to conform when it comes to our parenting, but we're supposed to be transformed. When we let God have our parenting, that means that we think differently about how we parent. We look at our jobs as parents through the lens, through the lens of God, and it's, it's just this idea of, of kingdom of God versus, versus culture. And, and, and we're, what, is, what is the greatest influence on you? Where, where, are you, where do you tend to lean as a parent? Do you tend to lean? Are, are you transformed? Are, are, are you parenting? Are you a kingdom parent? Or do you tend to be conformed? Where, where you're letting culture kind of say, hey, here's, here's what you do, need to do. Here's what you need to be. And so this morning, I, I very quickly want to take a look at five differences of kingdom parenting versus culture parenting and and you can follow along on your notes or it'll be up on the screen and the first one is this kingdom parenting says that i'm a steward i'm a steward culture parenting says that i'm in charge now if if you're looking at parenting through the eyes of god through that filter then you understand that your child is not yours That child belongs to God, and He's given you the opportunity. He's given you the responsibility. He's given you the stewardship of raising that child and pointing that child to God. I remember when we were in the process of of adopting Catherine. Some of you know a little bit of that story, but she was uh, she was in in Guatemala and and uh, through our adoption agency Buckner some of you know Buckner shoes for orphan souls and they do a lot of great ministries and one of the things they do is adoption and foster care and so they were our agency and so we had this unique and pretty rare opportunity to actually spend some time with her we got to spend a week with her in Guatemala because she was under the care of Buckner in one of their Buckner homes uh, foster homes um, orphan home, sorry, and so we, we were able to, to see her, be with her, because they thought, that the idea was, we'll make this connection, because just in, a, in, a, in about a month, we're going to get to be with her, like we're going to get to bring her home, but it was actually, after that visit, it was actually a whole year before we actually got to come back and get her home, so um, in, in, anyway, and so we, we got to be with her, we got to see where she was, and, and the cool thing was, is we actually got to go out with her, um, we had a, 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 a social worker who was with us and another Buckner staff who was with us the whole time, you know, and that's kind of weird because you're trying to get to know this little girl, and, but you've got these, you know, these four eyes that are watching you um, and watching everything that you do and just kind of looking at you, and they were super nice, but you just never really felt comfortable. But then the crazy thing was at night, they let us take her to our hotel room. So it was me and Shonda and the boys and, 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 and Catherine, and she's... Um, she can't speak a lick of English, and, and because of her cleft lip and palate, she's not able to speak uh, Spanish. It's very broken Spanish. She, it's hard to understand. We can only understand yes and no. And, and in Spanish, si is yes and no is no. So, but she said because of her, her palate, she was ni and no. That's, that's, that's what it was, ni and no. So yes or no. So we just ask a thousand yes or no questions. And so it's, but, but the deal was she was with us, but, but it, the idea was that she really wasn't ours yet. And so the things that, that we wanted to do, the things that we were kind of used to doing with our, we just had to be real careful. We just had to, you know, we, we were just kind of watching her. And especially when we were in the hotel room, we were like, okay, don't, don't bump your head on that. Don't do, oh, what, don't jump on the bed. You know, we're just, we're just kind of, because she's not ours yet. I remember we had the opportunity to go to a mall and, and spend some time at this mall. And I don't know how it happened, but Shonda and the boys went off with, with uh, one of the, the staff member from, from uh, Buckner. And our social worker went somewhere else. So it's just me and, me and Catherine just kind of sitting there uh, and wondering. And then Catherine, uh, in her broken speech, let me know that she had to go to the bathroom. And I'm like... I'm not your dad, you're not my daughter, you know, I, I don't know how to, what do we do here, I'm like, help, you know, I, I didn't know, and, and, and it was just, it was just this idea of, you know what, she's, she's not really mine, so I've got to be real careful how I treat her, how I take care of her, how, how I love on her, and, and, and the picture is, is that as parents, or as, as grandparents, as caregivers of kids, we have to understand, they are not our kids, they belong to God. 
And I think we need to remember that that, that, that that means that we need to love them as children of God. We need to parent them as children of God. We need to teach them as children of God. We need to discipline them as children of God. Does that, I mean, hopefully that makes sense to you. I don't want you to go home and look at your kids and say, Jimmy says you're not mine, so get on out of here. Don't do that. That's not what I'm telling you to do. Okay? But it's, it's, it's this idea of... But, but I, I think when, when we start thinking about parenting through the lens of stewardship, like this is a gift from God and I need to treat it as such, then, then our parenting changes. Matter of fact, James 1.17 says, every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. And these gifts come down from the Father, the creator of the heavenly lights and whose character there is no change at all. Our kids are gifts to us. We've been entrusted with these kids, these children that belong to God. And so we need to remember then they're God's, so we're not in charge. God, God is in charge, so we better listen to how He wants us to raise these kids, how to love these kids, and how to guide these kids on their journey. Second thing there, kingdom parenting says that I want to raise a disciple maker. Culture parenting says I, I, I want to raise a good kid. And some of you are probably out there going, I, I would love to have just, you know, just a good kid, yeah. yeah you know, and, but, and, what's, and, and I'm not saying that there's, there's anything wrong with raising, there's nothing wrong with raising a good kid, but I believe if we're going to think differently, if we're going to be transformed as parents, because of God, then we need to teach our kids to passionately pursue a relationship with God. A relationship with God that leads them to want to make an eternal difference in their worlds, where they go to school, where the teams that they're on, the friends that they have, where, everywhere that they do life. If you want a, a kid who is kind, who is respectful, who is nice, who is polite, then, then teach them to love God because of the fruit that comes from loving God, the fruit of, of, of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. That sounds like a really, really good kid. And if we teach our kids to love God and to passionately pursue Him, then those are going to be the fruits that come out of their lives as they develop in that relationship. Matthew 28, 18, 18 through 20. This might be a familiar passage to some of you. For some of you, this might be the first time you, you've seen this verse. But it says, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make good kids. Doesn't say it, does it? It says, And make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And here's a great promise. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. These are, these are our marching orders as followers of Christ. We're about to be, we're about, we're supposed to be about making disciples, pointing people to Christ. And those are our marching orders as parents. We're called to make disciples. And that should start at home. And please, please, please don't make the mistake that a lot of parents make, and they contract out the discipleship of their kids to the church. Well, they say, well, the, you're the church. That's your job. That's why we have children's ministry and preschool ministry and student ministry. You're, you're supposed to teach our kids about God. You're supposed to teach them to love God. That's your job. I, I provide, and you know, I, I give them food. I take care of them. We raise them. But you, you're supposed to disciple my kids. And if that's your attitude, then that's the wrong attitude. It's not our job. It's your calling as a parent to disciple your kids. And what the church does is the church comes alongside you as a parent to supplement what you're doing, to help what you're doing, to encourage what you're doing, but not to replace what you're doing. As parents, we're called to make disciples of our kids. Next thing there, Kingdom Parenting says, I'm going to saturate my parenting with Scripture. Culture parenting says, I'm going to saturate my parenting with whatever feels right. Whatever feels right. Remember what I said earlier, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of voices out there that are trying to get your attention, and they want to tell you, they want to tell us how to raise our kids. And these, these are, there's all kinds of parenting thoughts 
and ideas and strategies and tips and hints and philosophies. And all of them, all of them promise success. But as a kingdom parent, as a kingdom parent, your first move should always be towards Scripture. It should always be towards Scripture, and that is the filter with which you look, you look at all of the parenting advice that's out there. If it's contrary to God's Word, then run from it. If it's contrary to what God wants for us as individuals, as followers of Him, then, then, then get away from it. Now, I'm not saying that we can't learn from, from others, and I'm, I'm not saying that there's not a lot of a good information out there, but we have to be careful that we don't follow something because it's, it's just popular, or because it's, it's the new thing that I saw on Facebook, or, or I saw it out on social media, or, or I watched it on Good Morning America, or I saw it somewhere. If, if that becomes your first step to go to culture, then as a parent, what we need to do is we need to re-examine that and say, you know what, my first step should be towards Scripture. Should be towards Scripture and what God wants for me. Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, and that word there uh, in the Greek is meant to include mothers, so it's mothers and fathers. Do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Did you catch how we're supposed to bring them? How we're supposed to raise our kids in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Scripture, scripture should be all over your parenting. We, we shouldn't really be winging it when it comes to raising our kids. We want to be guided by truth. And remember, we're not to be conformed. We're not to, to take the shape of whatever culture says we're not supposed to parent like we're, we're what I like to call lazy river parenting because if you've ever been in one of those theme parks, you do the lazy river, you just jump on a, a, an inner tube and you just go wherever the current takes you. And that's a lot of ways that some of us parent is we just jump on the culture uh, inner tube and we just go, whatever culture, okay, that, that seems right, this is where culture's, okay, that seems, oh, now this one, okay, let me go that, no. Nope. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed not to be conformed, but we're supposed to be transformed. We're supposed to be rooted we're supposed to be immovable. We should be rooted in, anchored to the Word of God and His instructions on how to live our lives, which directly affect how we parent our children. The next thing there, kingdom parenting says, my, child, my child's identity is in Christ. Culture parenting says, my child's identity is in achievement. There is so much damage that can be caused by allowing our kids or pushing our kids to find identity, to find value, or to find worth in their achievements. And, and I want to make sure that you hear me say this too, parents. You can cause a lot of damage by trying to find your identity in your kids and in, your achie- and in their achievement. That's a lot of pressure to put on a child, and it's pressure that they were never meant to bear if you if you're expecting your kids to 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 give you identity if you're expecting your kids to to give you value if you're expecting your kids to 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 keep you you know keep you stable and afloat that's not what they were meant to do that's that's an a, a pressure that they should never have have put upon them because only god only god can give us that only god can give us peace only god can give us identity only god can give us value and worth and now please don't hear me saying that achievement is bad i know what a lot of people think well jimmy you never did anything so that's why you're up there saying don't don't do achievement you know you never won a race you probably got all the participation trophies so yeah of course you're going to say that no that's that's not it i'm not saying that achievement is bad we we should encourage our kids to do their best. We should help our kids achieve their goals and dreams. We should encourage hard work and practice and discipline. Yes, achievement is good, but I want to, I want to quote uh, author Paul Tripp, and he says it this way, good things become bad things when they become the main things. Good things become bad things when they become the main things. Parents, if, if something else, okay, and you name the activity, you name whatever you want to fill in that blank with, if something else, if those things have been elevated over a relationship with Christ, then it's wrong. It's wrong. If those things have been elevated to the point that that's where your child finds his or her value, 
then it's wrong. If your child's thoughts are, or if they say that if, if I'm not this or in doing, if I'm not doing this or a part of this, then I'm really not important, then I'm really not anything, then I'm nothing, then that's wrong. If those, if those things keep your child out of church on a regular basis, then that's wrong. Our kids are super involved in a lot of activities, and those are good things. They're, they're good things. And those are things to be proud of. Those are things that, that, that I think we can find fulfillment. Um, they're, they're not bad. Our kids learn a lot of great things through, through whatever activities um, they're involved in. And those activities can also open up opportunities. But when those things take the place of God things or God's place in their lives, then that's where I think they've crossed the line. And they're not good things anymore. 1 Peter 2, 9-10 through 10 says, But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do His work and speak out for Him, to tell others of the night and day difference He made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. That's the message that the kids just sang about earlier. And that, should, that right there, that should be our child's identity. Chosen by God, holy people, instruments of God. That should be all of our identities, actually. Tell your children that's where their worth comes from, from who God says they are. There's a, there's a worship song that, that sings, that part of the phrase is, I am who you say I am. And, and, and what a great thing, what a great message to tell your kids, what a great thing to remind yourself is we are who God says we are. Not what culture says, not what, what, what the, the outside world says, but we are. Our value is based not in what we do, but on who God, what God has done and who God says that we are. We are chosen. We're His representatives. Our children need to know that earthly achievements, those are good things, but they're not eternal things. Whatever activity your kid is, is involved in, and again, you, you fill in that blank. Whatever activity that is, as parents, we need to make sure that our kids understand that their calling is not just to be excellent in those things, but to be God's representatives in those things. And I hope, I, and I, I'm saying this in total honesty, I hope your child is the best at whatever they do. I hope that for my kids too, that they are the best at whatever they do. I hope they find success, and I hope that success leads to other opportunities and, and, and things, and, and I do. But more than anything else, I hope for your kids and I hope for my kids that, that our children know that their worth, that their value, that their identity is in Christ, and Christ alone. In Christ alone. Finally, Kingdom Parenting says that I will model the gospel. Culture Parenting says that I'm always right. I'm always right. As parents, I think sometimes we can fall into the trap of, of I, I'm right, don't question me, because I said so, do what I say, not necessarily what I do. You know, I know I'm doing things differently, but you do what I'm telling you to do. But a big responsibility we have as parents is to model, model the gospel. Look at, look at Philippians 2, 5-8. through 8. It says this, and this is, this is Jesus who he's talking about here. And your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And, and I think as parents, sometimes we, we think we've got to be We've got to be authority, authority over all. I'm always right. But you know what? It's okay to let your kids know that you're not perfect. It's okay that you make mistakes. And sometimes one of the things that we need to do is we need not only to grant forgiveness, but we need to be people, parents, who ask for forgiveness from our kids. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, caregivers, whoever, do the kids in your charge, the kids that you're responsible for, do, do they see love in you? Do they see a, par a servant's heart in you? Do they see humility in you? Do they see sacrifice in you? Do they see grace in you? Do they see forgiveness in you? 
Jesus, the Son of God, humbled Himself. He modeled for us what love, what love and sacrifice and humility and grace and forgiveness and servanthood. He modeled what that looked like. He modeled it for us, His children, and as parents, we need to model it for, for our kids and for our grandkids and for the, for the kids that, that we have responsibility for. And before we close, I, I want to remind you of something, and I've, you've heard me say it over and over, but I'm going to say it one more time. There are no perfect parents. The things that, that I've talked about this morning, they're, they're not meant to, to be burdensome, and they weren't meant to, to be something that, that, makes you, to, that makes you feel bad. And that They were meant to encourage you and, and remind you that what we need to do as parents. You see, because I think what happens sometimes is we can get busy just so busy doing life that we just get into our routines and, and we can go a, a day, a week, a month, maybe a year or years and never really be intentional about our parenting. We just kind of go with the flow and we've just got this routine and routines are good, but if we don't ever stop and look and say, how am I doing as a parent? Not in regards to what culture would say, what Facebook says, what Instagram says, not, not, not in, in, in regards to what, what the rest of the world says, but how am I doing as a parent based on what God says? Where is my bent? It, 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 when I look at our, our, our family, are, are we bent towards culture and falling into to the trap of, of trying to be what culture wants us to be? Or are, are, are we over here and, and we're doing our best to be kingdom-minded, to be parents, to be a family that, that's doing our best to follow Christ? Um, I, I, I think it's, it's important that we need to remember that our kids, they, they, don't, they don't belong to us. They, they belong to God. Remember that, that God's called us to lead them to be disciple makers, to, to passionately pursue a relationship with God. Remember that, that, that Scripture should be our guide, that, that that's where we run to as parents, and that, that's, what, that's, that's our true north. Remember that our child's identity, that our identity, is, needs to be in Christ. And remember that we need to model the gospel for our kids. They need to see Christ in us. And here's some good news. I don't, I don't want to leave you without telling you some good news. Is you don't have to do this alone. As a church, that's what we're called, that's what we're called to do. Is we're, we're called to partner with parents, to partner with families, to help, help you as you point your kids to Christ. The great thing about FBC Allen is that it's filled with parents who are in the middle of the journey or, or who have lived the journey, and, and what they're willing to do is they want a journey with you. Now, I, I, I will never, ever, ever have enough gratitude for this church. All three of, of my kids know the Lord and, and are walking in relationship with Him. They're not perfect. Um, I, I know that and because they came from imperfect parents, but uh, Part of, their, part of their relationship with God, I, I believe, was, was part of, of the influence of, of myself and my wife. But I do know that a huge part of their, of their walk with God happened because of you. Happened because of this church. Because of your investment in their lives. Because you taught them to love Scripture. Because you pointed them to God and you wanted them to be, a part, be in a relationship with Him. And I could never say thank you enough for that. And that's the beauty of church is that we come together. If you're not a part of church, or you're new to church, or you haven't been, part, you haven't been to church in a while, I, I, I'm glad you're here. And I want you to know that's one of the benefits about being a part of the body of Christ, is we don't walk this journey alone. But we have people who want to come alongside us to help us, to encourage us, to pray for us, to love on us, to guide us, to mentor us, to help us. If you're a parent and you need help, ask. There's no shame in ask. I know that our pride keeps us from, from doing a lot of things. Our pride keeps us from admitting a lot of things. And so just let, 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 me, let me take that burden off of you. You are not a perfect parent. And neither am I. And neither is anyone else in this room. So it's, not, it's, it's okay to say, I need help. 
if you're a parent and you want to help, maybe you've journeyed through the kids at home stage or journeyed through the preschool, you've already passed the preschool stage, you've already passed elementary, you're, you're past the student, many, or, or wherever you are, you're just a little bit ahead of somebody else and you want to help, then speak up. Speak up. Say, I'm here to help. Not, I'm the expert. Do it like I tell you to do it. Just to say, here's what I've learned from my journey. Maybe it will help you, maybe it won't. Here are the mistakes that I made. Here's the pressure that I put on myself. Here's the pressure that I put on my kids. Here's, here's how I did it. Here's some of the good, here's some of the bad, here's some of the ugly, and, and I know you're there, and here's where we are, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, part of my story can help you. And if you're an adult in this church who wants to help shape the lives of our children, then by golly, volunteer because we have preschool and we have children and we have students who need the influence of godly adults to pour into their lives. Again, I'll say it again, part of the reason why my kids are followers of Christ because of the adults who stepped up and said, I want to minister from preschool to children to students. And that's what we need. Parents, do not conform but be transformed. Let's be, let's be kingdom parents. Let's be kingdom church. Let's be kingdom individuals and let God's, the truth of God and what he's done for you and for me permeate our entire being and it affects how we live our lives, how we love one another, and how we raise our kids. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day that you've given us and thank you for the reminder of, through Scripture, of how we should live our lives, Father. Not malleable to culture, blowing in the wind, Father, but we are rooted in You, shaped by You, Father, to be what You've called us to be. Thank You, God, that there's grace for us as parents, grace for us as individuals, God, that we're not perfect, uh, matter of fact, we're sinners. We're all sinners. And the only hope that we have is through the hope of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that we would remind ourselves of that. And before we get a big head and say we're all that, God, we would remember the cross. And before we say well, we're no good, we're never good enough, I hope that we would look to the cross. Because, because the cross is the great equalizer, Father. We're all sinners and we're all saved by grace. So God, today I pray that you would help us to remember that. And help us to remember that we are to be a kingdom people. That we're to be a kingdom parents. To be a kingdom family. And God, help us to resist the pull of culture because culture is strong. Father, but we know that you are stronger. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Father, we love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray. Amen. We pray. Amen. We pray. Amen. We pray.